Hi, my name is Joanne. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you haven't been here, thank you for stopping by. Uh, today, I want to show you how I patch my husband's jeans. He is really rough on pants and he cannot let go of a pair of shorts or jeans to save his life. It's an issue we have <laughs> around here. I want him to throw I want him to just throw the jeans out, but he insists that I patch them and fix them. So today I've got a pair of pants that are one of his worst pairs. Um they are in really rough shape. Let's hold them up here. I'll show you some of the holes that we're going to deal with today. There's a huge hole here. There's one by the pocket. And pretty much the whole rear end on this side is blown out. I can't really show you too good here. I think you can get the idea. We're going to get a better close-up view of that in a few minutes. I just wanted to give you an idea of how bad these really were. You can see um, I've already patched down here on the bottom and uh, I've worked my way up, I guess. I, guess, I think that's how he wears them out every time. He, he starts kind of down by the knee and it works its way up. But I'm going to show you some of the supplies that you'll need, which is not very much. And you will need a sewing machine. That, and it needs to be, basically every sewing machine does this. Um, you'll need to lower your feed dogs. Um, there's usually a button, um, like a slider button behind the little tray that you pull out on the sewing machine where you can um, lower your feed dogs and they won't work while you're sewing and that's kind of um, important that you have that feature. You can do it without and I will show you both ways. It's just easier if you put the feed dogs down while you're darning. Um, darning jeans, that there's so many benefits to darning jeans rather than buying a patch. Um, they, st are, they stay very flexible and comfortable. You can barely tell the patches are there at all. And they are, they're very durable. They're not going to start wearing off in the washer or anything like that. And honestly, uh, all the parts that I darn and patch hold up way longer than everything else. <laughs> He's got a couple of pairs of jeans that are nothing but patches. I've had literally, literally had to let an entire leg out of a pair of jeans just so I could get to certain spots to fix them because he won't let go. Um, so anyway, hold on, we'll switch the camera view and I'm going to show you what you need and I'm going to show you what you are show you what we're going to do. These are some of the items that we are going to need. We will, well, we of course have our, our ratty jeans. We'll need a pair of scissors and maybe even a smaller pair of scissors. Um, to cut some of these threads away because we are going to clean the jeans up a little bit first. You're going to want a, some thread that matches. Um, I buy this this heavy duty Coats and Clark um, denim thread and it works pretty good. It's always held up for me, uh, rarely breaks. Um, this one's not quite as heavy as the dark but it obviously matches a lot better than the dark stuff so that's what we're going to use today. And you can just use white or whatever you've got in your bobbin. That's not even going to matter. It's going to be on the inside of the jeans and nobody's going to see it. Uh, you're going to want to use a little bit of fusible web. You can buy this in these little rolls or you can buy it by the yard basically. And you could basically stick down the whole piece. But we only need to rip off a few pieces of this just to get the patch to stitch and to um, stick down initially um, to make it easier to sew while we're sewing so that nothing moves around. So that's basically all we need. Start by taking some of these strings that are on the pants. Oops, forgot the scissors. The ones that are that seem like they're still attached are really long and we're just going to snip them off. Don't snip off any of the denim if you can help it. You don't want to you don't you want to lose as little of po as possible of the actual jeans. But if there's something jagged and it's sticking out really bad, what will happen is while we're darning, <clears throat> it will 
get caught up in your sewing machine or in the presser foot and then you'll end up having troubles so what I do is I usually take and just trim off all these little excess pieces so there's not too many I'll leave the ones that look like they're just kind of washed little edges on there because they ne never look too bad um, this one here um, I think if I put fusible web behind it let me kind of give you another view it's there's still quite a few threads across that are intact and not torn it's hard hard to show you uh, I'm gonna leave those ones right on there and I'm gonna put a piece of fabric right to that and it will make it that way the fusible web and the fabric will keep it all a little bit stronger this one too it's not bad at all but that big one had a lot of strings and then on the back here where there's tears there's a couple that are long and stringy I'm gonna nip off of here and just clean it up let me tip my iron down so it is warming up helps if you plug it in okay snip snip we're not taking a lot of anything just the just the ones that might get caught in your presser foot. So we've got all of these holes back here. Let's see if oh look at that. He's got a rip right there. Um that is a mess right there. Uh I think I'm gonna leave that one alone and I will survey that at the end. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with that yet. So back to the front. Well, next, we're going to turn these inside out. And we're going to find our holes, which are so very many. These pants are having, I'm having a hard time even getting them to lay flat. There's, there's so many patches already on them. This is all patch. This is all patch. They're very worn <laughs> so there's some more strings back here I'm gonna snip off just a few and what we want to do is give this a little bit of a press and try to get it to lay nice and flat and smooth so that when we put our patch on the denim will lay nice and flat as it would have normally before they were ever ripped and on this one, I think this is just big enough. We're going to put the whole thing on there. So what I'll do is I line that up and cover the whole area that has a hole in it. And what I'm going to do is take this little bit. It, it, it's, it's just really thin, kind of like fiber glue tape, I guess you could say. You do not want to get this on the bottom of your iron. So make sure that when you put it on there, you rip the pieces um, so that they, they are underneath, all underneath the fabric. Because that will gum up your sewing machine like crazy. And I'll just put a few strips here and there. I'm going to put a strip down along these sides. I'll just kind of lift up the edge and throw it on there. This is going to have everything stay in place really good. And look at there. See, I missed a, I got a little piece that's sticking out. And that could be just a headache for your, for your iron. And one more over here. That is more than plenty. I normally don't even use that much. Um, but I want to make sure it stays in place really well for you today. So... Then we'll just give this a nice quick press. I tried to keep the, uh, look at, I think I, oh, I thought I got some fusible web there. I think as long as you stay away from the holes for the most part with that fusible web, you won't have too much trouble gluing uh, one side of the jeans to the other. That's something you do want to watch out for as well. So we've got that stuck on there pretty good. And... We're going to go ahead and turn that around and take a quick peek and see what we've got. So you can 
<clears throat> you can see that dark gray a little bit right there. That's not bad at all. I did not realize we had such a glare. I'll try to hold things up for you there. So that one's covered and that one's covered. We've got the front pretty good. There's a rip right there we're going to want to get a little patch on. Normally, I do one at a time because I have a bad habit of missing holes and my husband gets all upset because he's like, I forgot, I thought you fixed my jeans and he goes to work and there's a hole in his jeans. <laughs> so this one's about this long. I just rough cut this fabric and after I'm done darning what I do, I will show you when we get to that point, I will just go and trim off the edges. I didn't sew. I'm going to put a little piece of that fusible web right over that because there's no real gap. And we'll just give it a quick press. Now we might want to just take a couple little tidbit pieces for each corner because I only did put that little piece there. So we might want to stick those corners down a little bit better with the fusible web so that everything is super in place. You don't want to start sewing and realize your patch underneath is all bent in half and wonky and you're just sewing a mess basically. So there we go. There's that side. <clears throat> and now we have the back side. And I think we can cut a we're going to just cut a few little patches out of here. Doesn't have to be perfect at all. See, a couple little pieces. That one's a little long. We're going to put them on each side of the hole here. Let me try to the window was open there. I thought might, that might help with the glare a little bit. Go ahead and put that piece on. This stuff does not take much at all to iron down and stick good. Just a few seconds. So that's that. We have a pretty good rip right down here at the bottom of the pocket. I don't generally ever use steam with fusible web. It's, it seems to make it backfire a little bit. So I would just use a straight hot iron and I use it on high so I don't know if that makes a difference for you or not. Say we got a little bit more right there so we'll put a little patch there and we're going to put one right there. Quick and easy. A little more sticky paper. Okay. And I just always kind of patch these things as they go. I I don't see the point in putting too much more on there than you really need. All right. So, you can see here from a long time ago where I patched the pockets. The pockets ripped out. And what I had to do is detach the corner of the pocket and flip that back and on the back I fused a little piece of cotton and I just darned it on and then I went back in with my, uh, I bought there's there's yellow thread just like that blue I showed you and you can go right along and sew and make it look like it was never really off there I mean you can tell there was a hole there but it doesn't look half bad this is a really ratty pair of pants all right, so we'll turn these right side out again. Maybe. And we'll see what we've got. I think I've probably missed something. Uh, there's a hole on the other side. I guess I will uh, spare you putting patches on that. But what we've do done is we've gotten this side in good shape. And we've got the rear end pretty well fixed up. Next step, sewing machine. Okay, so we've gotten ourselves to the sewing machine, 
and we've got our bobbin thread in there. I've got just that plain white, and I've got the uh, blue up here. I'm not going to move the camera, but there's blue coming out here from the needle. We're going to be sewing on top, like I said, and now on most sewing machines, when you pull this part off right here, there is usually a button, like right here, that you'll slide. It's kind of hard to slide, or it'll be on the back, somewhere on the back. And that's how you lower your presser fee. This particular machine just has a button, and it shuts them off. And we're going to use a regular presser foot. We're not going to do it um, any different. We want it to pull back and forth some. We just don't want the presser feet. Um, we can still pull the fabric back and forth with this foot. It's not bad at all. I will, I will show you what I'm talking about here. Um, so we're just going to leave that, this thing off of the machine. And we are going to put the leg over the arm of our machine, over the, over the throat. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the entire hole with the denim nice and flat so that it's laying like it naturally would. We're going to go all the way around it once just to kind of tack it down. Make sure we got our machine set up on a, on a um, regular stitch. Okay. Now you can see the presser foot's not moving. It's there, but it's really not doing anything, and we can move this right around, and we can kind of, we can go faster. And we're just sewing this down so it, so that we've got a good base to go from. And all I do is go around a couple times, and then you'll see, <clears throat> let's turn this around a little bit that that's tacked down pretty darn good there. It's not, that part's not going anywhere now. So, we're just going to kind of go all back and forth here, and we're going to just push this up and down, right around where the fabric and the denim, or the cotton and the denim meet. And we'll just kind of go back and forth and tack that down and make it nice and strong and we're going to go over the cotton as well because we want to match it up with the denim as much as possible but you can see this is just easy peasy just be sure to keep your fingers out of the way of the needle I usually go pretty fast when I do it And I go outside of the area a little bit. I do try to keep it out as neat as I can, but I go around because if you remember, we've got that patch and it's pretty big and we want to make sure we catch all of that patch with some thread. That way it'll be, that part of the, je the jeans will be protected. We won't have to worry about further holes. And, oh, also, let me remind you, these are my husband's work pants. We're not working on beautiful here. We're just working on functionality and comfort. right here I 
I'm just going to work my way right down onto that other patch that we have right here um, at the bottom. I'll just kind of zig my, zag my way down. I guess you could call this thread art in a way. I've had a couple of people ask my husband uh, where he got his designer jeans at and he just chuckled at them. hit that patch a little more down here. I don't generally trim any strings until I'm all done. But there's that one. All nice and sewn down. No more holes. What did that take me? Five minutes? I think about five minutes to do that side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the back side, and uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and do it, and we'll just play it in hyperspeed. At that way, we can get them done, and I don't have to walk away from the machine. All right, we're patched up pretty good there. I know there was another hole around the bottom of one of these legs I didn't want to deal with. Let's trim these off. One thing you can do to get the, when you have the denim starting to fray like that, and you kind of want it to, you, you don't care if it's like that, but you don't want it to do it anymore, you can just take a, run a stitch right along the bottom there. Now for this you could actually, this part, we can lift our presser feet up and sew like normal people and hit the uh, back button. You can actually do that on all of this. In fact that's how I'll do this part right now but if you just run a few stitches over the end there it's going to keep it from fraying any more than it already has. Now I'm, the, I'm thinking that we're going to have to add a patch here. This is pretty bad. Um, if I don't, it'll pucker. So we'll just let that one go for the moment. And I will get back and show you our finished product. I'll finish this up off camera and I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. Now wait a minute. I think I just told you I was going to show you how to do this if you didn't have... Uh, a machine where you could lower your feed dogs. I'm so sorry. We're back. So what I did is I just went ahead and I didn't even feel like using the um, stitch, uh, the the stitching, the web, the web fusible webbing. So I just sewed that right on the back with one stitch, and you can't even see the white thread. So now I'm just going to go back and forth on top of this, keeping it nice and flat. I'm just going to reverse right over the same spot, and then we'll go up around the other side. We're just going to keep doing this over and over until we feel like it's patched good enough. Now here's something that can happen and you want to be careful of it. Um, 
you can get your presser foot stuck like I was saying. Now see that's a little bit smaller than I should have made it, but that's all right. Now there's another thing that you can do too when there's a really bad hole like this. You can go ahead and go to a zigzag stitch. If you use a zigzag, whoops, I accidentally cut my thread. A zigzag stitch is really, really handy in this sense because it covers a much wider area. Like this hole, the way it is, it'll, it'll fill it in better. So we can even zigzag over this whole thing. Just, the machines just about do it for you. It's so easy. Just a little forward and back. Just make sure you sew good enough on each side of, of that hole so that you get some you get good durability. We'll get that part before it rips. See, it looks pretty good with the zigzag, too. Um, oh, look at that. There's another little rip right there. and we There's nothing back behind there, but we can easily fix that with the zigzag. Just make sure we go right over it. And we're going to go back and forth over that spot, like, four or five times. Let's see what we got. Yeah, no more hole. There we go. And you can see I've got all the strings that I said I'd wait until the end to snip. Not bad, no big deal. I think this pair of jeans is pretty well patched up. Oh, well, here's another example. Here is a spot that's starting to wear thin. It hasn't ripped yet. So what we can do there, we don't even need to put a patch under that. What we can do is just, I've got it on zigzag still. Just go over it a few times, and it's just going to totally rejuvenate that area. Now, ideally, the thread color would match a little better, but these old, you're not, I don't think they have dirty old jean thread color. If they do, somebody let me know. There, that spot's now pretty well. I know the light's terrible over here by my machine, but that's pretty well strengthened up right there. We're going to go over by some good light and show you what we got. Okay, you can see where I have that darker fabric under there, and there's some of the old strings from the jeans that I didn't cut off. Kind of gives it a natural look, I think. But uh, overall, pretty good. No more holes, and it's still very flexible. That's what my husband absolutely loves about when I darn his pants. There's nothing bunched up or uncomfortable about the um, about the patches. Look at that. I never did this side. <laughs> That's all right. You've got the general idea. I think you can go and run with it. And look at I think I need to hit it a little more right here. But we're done for the most part. Back is good. Holes no more. I don't know how well you can see that, but um, you can definitely tell they're patched. There's nothing we can do about that. When something gets this bad, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do, but patch it up and make them as comfortable as possible. But we did go all the way around that bottom and fix that as well. So I guess I have a little more patching to do. So I hope this helped you out. and. If you like this video, please, by all means, give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. I'm so glad you stopped by. You have a wonderful, wonderful day.